Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Vlog. I am the critic who is the cynic. Hope you're doing well. And today, first off, I just need to start off by saying thank you all so very much uh, for all of your support over the last several weeks, especially because it has just been truly amazing. And also, I need to give a huge shout out to Jeremy over at Gigs and Gamers who had me on a live stream yesterday, which was so freaking fun. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video if you want to go check it out for yourself. And it's going to be dealing a lot with the news that I'm going to be covering today about the Ryan Johnson situation and also about the... <laughs> Also about the amazingly, amazingly beautiful and awful uh, John Campia. But before that time, we hit 10,000 subscribers last night. Um, according to my Valkyrie, around midnight, around 12.30 or so. And a huge part of that is because of the drive that uh, Jeremy did on last night's stream. Also, the huge support from from him. And also, Nerdrotic as well. Apparently, Nerdrotic noted that I was very, very close to 10,000 and got the word out there. And boom hit 10,000 last night. So thank you all so much. If you are new to the channel, thank you so much for subscribing, but also thank you to Nerdrotic and of course, Jeremy over at Geeks and Gamers as well. And as I said, I will leave a link to that video in the description below. It's awesome. We were able to, you know, it's it's really cool because not only were we talking, just having fun. Like seriously, we were having so much freaking fun, um, but we had Mecha Random come on, Nerdrotic, Josiah Rise was on there. Ethan Van Skyver joins a little bit later in the stream as well for, you know, for a little bit. And it was just so much damn fun. So seriously, join it. Even though uh, the rumor turned out to be fun False, which, yes, unfortunately, the rumor is false that Ryan Johnson is no longer having the trilogy, but it's still a lot of fun nonetheless. But that is indeed the news of the day. So as you see here, right from Ryan Johnson himself, very late last night, he says, no, it isn't true. I'm still working on the trilogy. With all due respect to the movie bros, who I'm sure are lovely, kind bros with good fraternal intentions, which to me is just them. You know, once again, Ryan just continues to be his trolling self. But the thing that I wanted to point out today is, does this really mean, though, that we're actually going to see this trilogy come out in theaters? That is where I very much still have doubts, because at the end of the day, what I know is that people, for the most part, very evenly split on his movie. There are a lot of people, I would say a majority of people, especially when this news broke, that do not like, that do not like The Last Jedi, that have problems or at least issues with The Last Jedi, especially from a story's perspective. Most people from whom I talk to, from what I see online. And the reason why people are going to say, oh, well, you can't say most people or, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, here's the thing. When the news broke last night, again, comicbook.com was covering it. Screen Rant covered it as well. It was getting a lot of attention. 70 to 80% of all of the tweets, I was watching it all in, in real time. You can go ahead and watch the live stream for yourself. I was literally, the whole time, I was looking at Twitter. I was looking at all of the live comments as they were coming in. And over 70 or 80% of the comments were so freaking happy were so positive because they were like, thank God this man is gone. Thank God this guy does not have a trilogy anymore. Only a few, like only a handful came in and said, oh, this sucks, or oh man, I wish I could have seen it. Or of course you had more so people saying, man, this is all because of the toxic fandom and blah, 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 blah. Like seriously, like there was a handful of people doing that and the vast majority were so freaking happy that this news was there which tells me everything that i need to know because not only can i look to the fact that still around tomatoes it's under 50 percent it's a rotten review it's a rotten score from fans not only can i also look to the fact that six months later solo star wars came solo solo star wars story came out and lost 200 million dollars to the box office oh well that's because it was solo and no one wanted that movie etc that all might be true. Two things can be true at once, but you cannot tell me that we had the first Star Wars film in history lose money for no other reason than the movie itself. That there were no other things, there were no other environmental uh, effects on this film. No, no other things that could have possibly had an impact on it. It could not possibly have been that Ryan Johnson broke the Star Wars fandom with his terrible film. Could, could not possibly have been that. And so when I look at these words where he says, I'm still working on the trilogy, I believe him. I take him at his word. I honestly think that he is still working on it. That he still has in his head, I am going to be working on this script and these are the things that I want to do, etc, etc, etc. That does not mean that I think that the trilogy is actually going to end up happening. And there's a lot of reasons for me to think that. As I said before, do I have any proof that he is going to be fired? No. And I'm never going to claim to have that kind of inside information. This is speculation. You know, I always try to make it very clear that I am definitely trying to speculate on a lot of these things, but it's because I'm trying to use common sense here. When I look to the fact that he's a very unpopular guy among the fandom, when the vast majority of people heard this news, they were so freaking happy, at least on Twitter, which I know is not a perfect pool size, not a, not, a, not a perfect sample pool, I still think it's pretty telling nonetheless. I still think it's pretty telling when you have just so many more people happy over the news than sad. I really do think that says a lot about it. Not to mention that you had asshats, complete and utter asshats like Mr. John Campia, who we'll get to in a second, who continue to go after the fans, just like Ryan Johnson did at the very beginning. 
See, Ryan Johnson likes to claim that he's fine if people didn't like his film. He likes to claim that, oh, no, it's all fine. But in reality, he, he, <laughs> he is spinning it. He is totally spinning it for everyone. He's trying to say, oh, I'm, such, I'm just a nice guy. I'm just a victim of circumstance. No, you made a terrible film, and then when people called you out on that terrible film, you called them man babies. You called them all variety of names. And then, of course, shill media like Mr. John Campio over here put this little gem out there. He said, I personally have no idea why Ryan Johnson would even want to do another Star Wars film. Love or hate The Last Jedi, there was simply no excuse for the vitriol abuse that he took from some F-twit fans. Something that made all Star Wars fans look like cousin-humping, basement-dwelling losers. And you can see live on stream because guess what? We saw this, <laughs> I saw this tweet as it was tweeted. I made a comment on it. I retweeted it, laughing my ass off just because of how stupid John Campia is. And then, <laughs> and then Jeremy retweets it. And within two minutes, John Campia deletes it. And just just today, the quartering decided to, to put this out there saying, hey, why did you delete this? Guess what? Once you put it out there, hey, John, once you put your stuff out there, you can't take it back. And this makes you look really bad. This makes you look awful. And anyone that's going to come to your defense and say that, you're oh, you're a good guy, you're just a nice guy, I'm sorry, if you're calling people F-twits, if you're calling people cousin-humping, basement-dwelling losers, how in the hell do you have a platform? How in the hell do people come to you for movie advice or for, for cultural advice or for, cu for cultural news when you're going to be such an asshat like that? Seriously. Well, you call people asshats. Yeah, I call people asshats because guess what? It's a funny word. It's a funny thing to say, but you are calling people cousin humping, basement dwelling losers and f twits. And yes, I'm going to censor that for myself because I <laughs> I hold myself to a little bit of a higher standard than maybe maybe Mr. John Campia does on his channel. But then John responds to this by saying, "I deleted it because I decided it was a topic I wanted to discuss on my show instead of because of the truth of it. Instead, because of the truth of it." Interesting. I do it all the time. Tweet a thought, then think, crap, I should talk about that on my show instead. Delete the tweet and save it for the next day. Tune in. No, 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 no. John Campion. Don't you try and spin this. Don't you dare try and spin this nonsense. Let's see if he tried to add on to it more because I guarantee you this is the kind of person that would try and defend his honor. But it looks like he, nope, he didn't. And everyone's calling him out, calling him out for it because guess what they should. No, the reason why you deleted it is because you realized, oh, I am not on the winning side. You realized that you were getting so much negative press. You were getting so much negative attention to this to the point where <laughs> Jeremy Gizzing Gamers, a channel of over 100,000 subscribers, picked it up as well. And guess what? You probably got, you started to get tweeted out of the wazoo and you thought, oh my gosh, I thought this would be a lot more well accepted. Mm, wait a minute. More people hate Ryan Johnson than I suspected. Because that's what the truth of it is. More people do hate Ryan Johnson. More people do hate his movie. It's not that we even hate him as a person. I mean, I will say I dislike him as a person. I don't think that he's a stand-up guy, but I don't hate him as a person. I don't hate anyone as a person because guess what? We're all human persons. We're all flawed. We can all change and convert over time. And I really do hope that Ryan Johnson one day realizes just how much of an asset he's being. But John Campia, I seriously, and, and Jeremy said this before, how about he looks up to you? I don't want to say that I look up to you because to be perfectly honest, you were the one who pissed me off the most on AMC Talk. Because every single time you open your damn mouth, you made excuses and excuses and excuses for every damn movie. You are about the epitome of what it means to be a shill. You are the epitome of what it means to say crap out of your ass because you want your press pack, because you want to go interview people and you want to have your status. You want to have your little blue check mark, verified check mark, because that's all you care about. What's interesting, though, is you will say stuff like this and nothing will happen to you in the end. You'll still have all of your little, you know, little fangirls and fanboy betas who will be following you and going after you and supporting you. But in reality, what you've realized is that you got into the wrong fight. You got into the wrong business because if you go into this, if you go into this, if you try and make it seem like Ryan Johnson is the victim in all of this, you are going to get plastered. And guess what you did? So you tried to take it away. You said, oh, I can delete it. It's going to be gone. <laughs> you can't stop the signal, Mal can't stop the signal so now we have it for all of time to show just how much of an idiot you are and i remember back some of my first videos ever was when i was talking about solo star wars story and i remember that one of the first things one of the first video topics that i had was actually on john campia and you can look back then i was a lot more respectful i thought i thought a little bit more of john campia but after this kind of nonsense i have no respect for him and I'm kind of glad that I found out that he's not going to Star Wars because his claim is, oh, well, it's become so toxic. No, you're not going there because you're a coward. Because you know that a huge chunk, in fact, I would say most people there are not going to be wanting to see this current state of Star Wars continue. 
are not going to be fans of the Ryan Johnson movie, are going to be fans of the prequels, which you have gone after since, like, forever. So that's the reason why you're not going is because you know for a fact that you will not be able to take and stand any criticism. Anyone that comes up to you and says, hey, let's have a discussion about that tweet, you'll be like, no, and go back into your safe space. So basically what you've confirmed is that you are a safe base beta male who just needs to shut his damn mouth. That's what you are. You need to shut your damn mouth because it's crap like this. <laughs> it's crap like this that has led to the fact that Ryan Johnson, just a rumor of Ryan Johnson being fired, being not given a trilogy, stepping away from a trilogy is enough to make the internet go on fire. Twitter especially on fire, Reddit on fire, and for the vast majority of people, it was positive thoughts. It was, man, I am so freaking glad. And I still think, by the end of the day, we're not going to get his trilogy. They would be stupid. Disney would be total idiots at this point to go ahead with this trilogy. For the main reason that he's toxic to Star Wars. And it's not because of toxic fans. It's because he's toxic. It's because you're toxic. The only toxic ones in this entire situation are people that broad, <laughs> that paint with a broad brush. Oh, all of you people are cave dwelling or cousin humping basement dwelling losers. Really, I I'm not in a basement. Um, I I uh I don't I don't hump my cousin. In fact, I don't really talk to my cousins at all. Um, I, I'm not an f twit. I don't really know what that means. I am a Star Wars fan. Hugely so. I think I could say that a hell of a lot more than you could at this point. Especially since you've proven yourself to be a coward because guess what? You realize, oh, I'm getting so much negative press for this comment. I'm going to delete it. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I saved it because I'm going to talk about it on my show. Okay, yeah, sure, sure. Use that as an excuse. We know the truth. We know the truth. You're a coward. You're a complete and utter coward. And it's sad because at the end of the day, you have channels like Geeks and Gamers skyrocketing. Popularity is rising through the roof. And they got channels like yours, which are, yeah, becoming stagnant. Because people are starting to find out very quickly just how much of a shill you are. Just how much of an asshat you truly are. Or as you like to say, an F-twit. Though I wouldn't even call you that because I think that's a stupid word to begin with. Seriously, you think that's, you think that's clever? Asshat is so much more clever than that, John. Come on, Mr. John Campia. Ah, man. It's so interesting to me. It's so fascinating to me to see people like this who claim the moral high ground who try and pretend like they're better than everyone else, who try and pretend, oh, Ryan Johnson, he is the victim here. Oh, the vitriol, the vitriol. It's amazing that he talks about vitriol that was, you know, an abuse that was put forward to Ryan Johnson. If by abuse you mean, oh, he was being criticized for his movie that was, objectively speaking, bad. I'm going to once again shout out my boy Matthew Kadish, who's done several articles Breaking down why, from an objective standpoint, from a story perspective, the movie is crap. Why The Last Jedi sucks. Again, you can subjectively like the film, John Campia. You have that subjective right, but you do not have right. You do not have a right to objectivity. You do not have a right to what is true, the facts. And the facts are that it's a terribly written story. That there are things that it does not connect to in the first film. That is one of the worst middle films of any franchise ever in the history of existence because what it does is it says oh, all those cool things all those setups in part one we're going to ignore them subvert them and act like they never happened ryan johnson was so full of himself when he made his movie that he thought i'm gonna make a movie for me that i think i will like and i think my my hardcore fans will like you know i'm gonna make it and you know, it's gonna be the greatest film ever from from me and i don't care what came before and what comes after he's obviously done that because when you look at that film, do you see any connection to the first one? Not really. Characters, maybe. Small things. But nothing of substance. When the movie ends, you think, oh, man, oh, Brimboy. Brimboy's looking out into space. But, okay, what, what you know, we, we were left with nothing to look forward to. No, nothing has been left set up. Oh, the books? Oh, we, we don't know what the Jedi books are. Who gives a crap? Who gives a crap at this point? Well, maybe you. Maybe you in your little basement. But seriously, like, I just, uh, but what all this is coming around to is the fact that this, this, the Disney shareholders, and this is what I think is an interesting, you know, right now it's a rumor, it's a conspiracy, it's speculation, I think. Speculation is probably the more accurate thing, because conspiracy would be like, Ooh, it's the truth, it's the truth, it's the truth. And I know a couple of people out there that are conspiracy theorists who I try to stay away from, because they claim to have information that they don't really have. And then they say, oh, how can you, you can't deny that I have it. Okay, well, show me, oh, I can't show you, that's not, okay, well, then I'm not going to believe you. But what we do know is this. The Disney shareholders are meeting early March, the day before, actually, the release of Captain Marvel. 
one of the biggest topics that they're going to be talking about is what is going on with Star Wars? Why is Star Wars losing money? Why are we losing money at the box office? Why are we losing money in merchandising? Why is it that all of these other things are doing well, but Star Wars is not? And one of the first things they're going to talk about is, yeah, remember when that rumor came out? Because guess what? It got such a big story that big media companies were starting to cover it. Again, Screen Rant was covering it. Comic.com was covering it. So people with very large followings. Guarantee you the shareholders were following that story and know about it. And so they're going to look into that saying, wait a minute. Why is it that when that story broke, everyone was happy? We want people seeing our films. We want people supporting our films to be happy. So you know what we should do? We should probably do what makes the, <laughs> what makes the fans happy, which would be firing Ryan Johnson. Asking him to take a hike, you know, do his own trilogy of his own movie, take Broom Boy and, you know, take the force out of it and just do his own Broom Boy trilogy. Go ahead and do that. Go ahead and do that, Ryan. Because seriously, I think at this point they would be stupid. It would be idiotic of them to do this because Ryan Johnson is not, he would barely get, he would barely get his own audience to go out and support him. The Phantom Menace would stay home. Like that's a, that is, if he's given a trilogy, I'm not even going to watch it to review it. And I'm doing that for things like Captain Marvel, Episode 9. I'm going to go see it. Probably going to buy a ticket to something else. Not officially. Because I can't officially say that. And then go see it eventually and then, you know, <laughs> get my thoughts on it. But that's, I wouldn't even do that for Ryan Johnson's trilogy. Just because I honestly think that he and everyone else at Disney, especially Mr. John Campy here, needs to understand that you don't just ruin a franchise and then call a bunch of people racist, misogynist, homophobic, um, you know, incel, man baby, you know, everything that Ryan Johnson and all of the people like Ryan Johnson, like John Campias have said around the world, F twits, basement dwelling losers, cousin humping. You call us vitriolic. The worst thing I've called you is an asshat. I'll let the words that you said speak for themselves. But anyway, guys, what are y'all's thoughts about this? Again, I was so excited last night. Go watch the live stream if you can. I'm again, I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description of this video. It was so much fun. Even though we, we were totally playing it as a rumor, because that's all we, you know, we confirm that every time. We say, guys, it's just a rumor. We have the potential to be very excited. It was so much fun. It, it really was. It was a total blast, and it was great. The community was great. I really hope that we're able to do that again, even if it's not a big news night or a big, big news story. The fact that we can get a bunch of, like, you know, a giant channel like Geeks and Gamers meeting up with a bunch of other, like, bigger channels like Nerdrotic, who just hit 40K last night, so congratulations to Nerdrotic, and Mecha Random, who is also just, like, doing insanely well, like, like well over, like, 25,000 or something like that, like, like just doing insanely well. And it was just really cool to be able to, Josiah, who, who's going to hit, a, who I think just hit 1,000 subscribers last night, like, seriously, it's just, it's truly awesome to be a part of that community and to be a part of Ethan Van Skyver, who's just himself about to hit 100,000 viewers and subscribers, and... To have all of those people and all those groups coming together in that way, it was just awesome. And we were all having fun. Everything was upbeat. And I'm telling you right now, they would be so, so smart if they were to look at that and wait and say to themselves, you know what? Maybe we should start listening. Maybe we should start trying to make this franchise what it always has been for the fans. If George Lucas understood anything, he understood that people were expecting certain things. And yes, he knew that obviously he can surprise people. Again, no, I am your father. Huge surprise. One of the biggest twists in cinematic history. And yet it all fed into things that the people in the first film, when they saw it, loved. It all fed into the story that everyone loved. He didn't just say, I'm going to crap the bed and make my own film for the middle one. No. Instead, he said, I'm going to pick up the story and it's going to continue. And I really hope that the shareholders that, that are again meeting March 7th in St. Louis, I really hope that they pay attention to all this going on because when you have the vast majority of people out there giving a positive spin, giving a positive reaction to Ryan Johnson. Just the rumor, just the rumor alone of Ryan Johnson not having a trilogy, bringing 70 to 80% of people to a happy place. To me, that speaks volumes. But leave your own thoughts in the comments below. If you like this video, smash that like button. Give me a subscribe. You are all amazing and beautiful people. Like, seriously, thank you so much. We are at 10K, and I cannot wait to do more videos. I'm definitely going to be doing more videos about Captain Marvel because the news just broke today that they are expecting now that the movie is going to make $100 million. Now, what's interesting is that they were saying beforehand that it would make like $160 million. So that's quite a far cry. They said it could make upwards of $120 million, which to me is, is falling more in line with my own speculations and with my own predictions which i cannot wait to do that video um in the future but anyway guys thank you all so much for watching i, I love you guys so much have a wonderful day and as always god bless and god help you ryan johnson and most especially god help you john campia